I said to you, do you want this £20 note? And you said to me, is the sky blue? I may just keep my money. Hi, my name is Scott Naismith and I'm a landscape painter and this is really about colour perception and sky. Uh, I've had a series of videos about colour and I'm about to do a video about how to paint better skies. But this is about colour perception within the sky. You think the sky is blue when it's cloudless? Well actually it grades from what is somewhere between blue and cyan right up top and the perception is that it remains blue and, and just gets lighter as it goes down and many amateur painters will uh, I did it myself with watercolours when I was 10 or 11 years old I started painting landscape and watercolours and I would take my ultramarine blue and I would have a bead of water coming down the lines and produce my graded blue sky uh, by just thinning ultramarine but the sky is not ultramarine. It may start off about cobalt blue and grade down uh, to a cerulean or a cyan. To appreciate these differences between the blues, the hues of the blue as it grades from blue cyan to cyan, uh, we can actually use a colour picker on Photoshop. So let's go and do that. Okay, I've got open here on Photoshop a photograph of Actually, it was the uh, Strewy Hill painting, uh, one of the photographs I took for reference for that painting. And uh, what we have here is the blue sky uh, behind this cloud, and it grades from a darker blue to a, a lighter blue, or more accurate, closer to cyan. So, we're going to look at the colour picker and choose a foreground colour. Now, when we choose a colour on uh, Photoshop, you are able to pick a colour from here. Uh, now what the colour picker does is it shows you just how unsaturated the hue is in this box, how light it is uh, as a distance from the top left corner, how dark it is as a distance from the bottom and how unsaturated it is as a distance from the right corner. Um, so we have this colour here and it shows us where this hue lies. Um, now we can pretty much take blue as being here if we put the blue levels uh, to 204 and the red levels and green levels to 0 we have blue as being here. We can also put the cyan levels to 93 with the other two levels at 0 and we get cyan being around here. Actually, uh, this colour here, 93% cyan, 0 magenta, 0 yellow. I'm now going to pick a colour from the sky, which is further down, and if you keep an eye on where this hue changes to it doesn't change at all and this cyan in the sky is the pretty much the equivalent of a zero yellow zero magenta and full cyan so uh, we're looking at this color here so if we go to the complete saturation of that color we can see that purity of hue there and that is pretty much where we are uh, with the sky down here. It actually moves down a little bit further towards the greens. Okay so that is the difference. So we'll go back up to the top of the sky and we'll see this hue move up the way a little bit. But at no stage is it anywhere near this blue which would be uh, 212 blue, 0 green, 0 red. Uh, that would be entirely blue and we get that hue here. It's nowhere near that. It's The sky ranges from this blue cyan here to the, a cyan down here. So when we get to the bottom of the sky down here, you're really talking about cyan. So that's why the sky isn't blue. Now, 
uh, if we are to look at colour perception, uh, similar things happen with other colours that we don't have a good vocabulary for. Uh, so, in the English language, we are really uh, limited in our vocabulary and our colour perception. There is a tribe in Africa which have a, a number of names of different colours uh, that all lie between this range of green uh, and green cyans here. Uh, we have very few names of different colours around there that are familiar with us from a young age, so we're not able to decipher the differences. Now look at everything between cyan and yellow being labelled as green. There's a multitude of colour here uh, through turquoise and, and teals uh, to these lime colours here. Um, and actually we can be very mistaken uh, with our mixing of greens. So you need to familiarise yourself with the uh, variety of greens and you can actually do that with the colour picker. So we look at this little grassy area here and you say to yourself, well, uh, that looks pretty green. You put your colour picker on it and the fully saturated version of that colour is almost pure yellow. Uh, and that goes in here and you can click around this color to get slightly more green or slightly more yellow uh, but it all remains almost yellow we see yellow as being green if it's got even the slightest touch uh, of green or cyan in it uh, we go to this yellow and we perceive that as yellow uh, but actually when we color pick it it's orange so what this colour picker does is it brings a colour from the photograph out and in isolation we can appreciate exactly the hue of that particular colour. Really handy uh, thing to use in Photoshop as a colour picker but you do need to understand how it works. Hue, saturation and values up and down. So that colour picker on Photoshop, it really shows you the to appreciate the fully saturated versions of the colours that you're looking at and it tries to combat that, the perception of what you're seeing and instead of the perception giving you the reality of what is actually there. Um, very difficult to do that with observation uh, for a lot of amateurs or beginners uh, when you're painting and uh, if you're painting from life um, you can, there's ways of isolating your colour. So this is a nice wee technique to isolate your colour when you are perceiving what that colour is without its context. Take a little bit of paper and get yourself a small hole. Get yourself a small hole in that paper and you can perceive what a colour is uh, without the context and you can see it in relationship to pure white. And you can do this with, uh, say, a, a grey piece of paper or even a black piece of paper to isolate that colour. Um, and it's sometimes quite good to uh, compare one colour and another so you can uh, cut another hole in it, hold it up to the sky and perceive the colour at the top of the sky compared with the colour at the bottom of the sky in isolation so that you don't have that gradual change between them. Really to appreciate that colour uh, without its context which is much easier to perceive. I'm probably going to get this little device out um, in my next video about how to paint better skies uh, and some of that is about perceiving colour. So the next time somebody asks you if the sky is blue, you can tell them, well, not necessarily, it's actually much closer to cyan. Uh, you will be technically correct, but you probably won't win many friends. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and indeed this channel. Look out for my next video about how to paint better skies.